This final row of skills inside the skills kit really started to get into putting it all together. The previous 10 skills are more specific to you as an admin or Salesforce professional, different pieces, either soft skills or technical skills. But once you get into this final row, you start to get into your larger work as a piece of the whole and a piece of a larger product or project. And it's here in change management skill number 11 that you go from making changes inside of your own environment or sandbox in order to combine work and changes with other Salesforce professionals as well as moving that into either user acceptance testing or production. There's a lot of complexity around this, but at a very high level, change management is where you manage changes to business processes, technology, and people within Salesforce. So let's dive deeper and look at how to represent these skills on your resume. Examples that they give here in the skills kit would be that you've worked closely with stakeholders to ensure business readiness for any upcoming changes related to Salesforce. So there's that term stakeholders. You see that throughout the skills kit. And the takeaway from that fact is that you need to work well with others. No one can work as an island under themselves to find success on the platform in this ecosystem is to be able to work with your key stakeholders, everyone that's involved and contribute and add value all along the way. And with change management as well, if you've had experience with managing or assisting with those three major Salesforce releases per year, that's something that's just built in out of the box expectation of Salesforce is that there are going to be three major releases per year. And with that comes some communication to your user base. You may approach that by distributing a newsletter or hosting training sessions to communicate those upcoming Salesforce changes really just staying up to date with the release cycles of Salesforce, when that's going to occur, when that's going to hit production in your various sandboxes, and what that may mean for your end users or on the technical side as well. Other features inside of Salesforce that you can do to help with this would be to set up in-app guidance to highlight changes within Salesforce, as well as if you have experience with creating and maintaining sandbox environments for testing. The sandbox environments get preview releases before the major releases of Salesforce, and that gives you advanced view of things that are coming down the pike in the next release to be able to test it out to make sure that it doesn't cause any problems with the upcoming releases with what you've already have built and in place inside of your own org. And so this in-app guidance, I'm going to go into Salesforce and show you where to find that. You can search for in-app guidance inside of setup. You'll find that underneath user engagement. And in-app guidance is where you can add learning prompts inside of your application. You can click on settings to start setting that up. You can adjust the settings for how frequently you provide your in-app guidance. But to set that up, you can click add down here at the bottom and start building in-app guidance using the builder that shows up. I can click add and then I can provide either a single prompt or a walkthrough. And you've been on the receiving end of in-app guidance. Salesforce provides this when there's major news or updates related to the platform. And then you can go from there once you've decided on either a single prompt or a walkthrough by clicking next. And then configuring the type of prompt and going from there. And it gives you a preview of what that prompt might look like. You can add your own customized title and body for that prompt. And as I type, you'll notice that the preview updates accordingly. Another nice thing is you can customize the button label for the dismiss button. Whenever you're done with all your settings here for your in-app guidance, you can click save and you can set various actions. You can schedule when this is to appear. And so for that action, I'm going to have a button that says go to MWM and then the action link URL will take users to my website. I'll click next. We can schedule this with a start and end date range as well as a frequency to either show when the page loads and also how many times to show it to the end user with how many days in between showing that prompt so you're not nagging them to death. I'm gonna click next. You have no profile restrictions, but you can specify specific profiles so that only those inside of those specified profiles will see the in-app guidance if you so desire or just have no profile restrictions so it applies to all. And for permissions, I'm going to set no permission restrictions, but you can give specific permissions so that users assigned with all of the selected permissions see the in-app guidance. I'm going to leave that to no permission restrictions. And then finally, I can set the details. I'm just going to call this sample for sake of time and give a description and click save. And so here is my prompt and I can click the be gone to dismiss it. I've got the link to go to MWM and the finish button as well. And let me go ahead and click done and refresh. 
So that's just a little bit on in-app guidance. Now on the employer side for change management, they're looking for those that have overseen all activities related to managing changes within Salesforce, including changes to business processes, technology, and people. So the changes of people would be things around activating, deactivating users, changing up where they are in the role hierarchy, perhaps making changes to their profiles, permission sets, Changes to business processes may be any one of the three primary processes of Salesforce, which would be lead process, sales process, and support process. And then as well, employers are looking for those that have designed and implemented new processes within Salesforce that could be some sort of custom process, for example, beyond the primary three of lead, sales, and support processes inside of Salesforce, as well as facilitating user adoption of these processes. So it's one thing to design and implement them, but to help drive user adoption is key and fundamental in the employer's eyes. And then finally, you need to possess the knowledge of deployment strategies and processes, for example, staging an environment versus production. So that's where you get into potentially sandboxes and that whole deployment strategy. Now, as it relates to change management, there are several resources available from the Skills Kit tab here, such as three tips for improving your change management skills as a Salesforce admin, as well as empowering your Salesforce users. There's also hashtag low code love change management, which is a trail mix with several different links and modules that you can explore. And then finally, change set development model, which is a trailhead module, about a 30 minute completion time on that. So that my friends is change management skill number 11 found inside of the admin skills kit. Next up, skill number 12, process automation. Will I see you there?